Blog Talk Radio. matchups, if you will, in the Big 12. Both of them were were good old-fashioned shootouts with some drama-filled endings, no doubt about it, especially Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, man. That was uh, was an interesting way to end it, that's for sure. And something was going on with my – there we go. I don't know why that kept hitting. Anyway, I'm just talking to myself over here. Um, So, yeah, we're going to start the show with – Week 11 recap, like I said, a variety of things happened. Did uh, all hell break loose? No, but there was a a lot of competitive games. We had some minor upsets. Like I said, we definitely had some fun shootouts in the Big 12. Um, Ohio State had a nice little bounce back um, victory after kind of looking like crap for several weeks in a row. So, yeah, I mean, there's a variety of things to, to you know, to talk about from week 11. Um, week 12, it's one of those on the surface kind of looks light, right? The, I guess you could say the marquee matchup, just because Notre Dame's unde- undefeated, and as of right now, they're in line to be one of the national semifinalists. Number three, Notre Dame against number 12 Syracuse would probably be the, the, the biggest game. Now, another big power five, or I should say non-power five game. Last week it was Boise State in Fresno. This week it's number 11 Central Florida versus number 25 Cincinnati. Number 15 Texas against number 16 Iowa State. is a very intriguing matchup. Iowa State has just been on a tear. And, uh, you know, we'll also – so those are kind of the big matchups. We'll also talk about some games kind of flying under the radar. Of course, we'll uh, go against the spread. We'll kind of talk betting lines, um, and, you know, give us give out some hardcore barn burners where you think, well, yeah, there's not a whole lot at stake for this game, but, you know, keep an eye on it for the fourth quarter type of thing. So we're definitely going to start with recap from last week, week 11. And then we're going to move on to breaking some of these uh, these games down on the schedule. Now, as far as Week 11 goes, uh, actually, before I get there, if uh, this is your first time listening to the College Ball Show, it streams live right here on blogtalkradio.com forward slash rope it over radio. It streams live and archives. We've been kind of doing it on Wednesdays or Thursdays, somewhere in that realm, whatever kind of works best for our schedule. So you can find it right here. Like I said, it's basically the headquarters. But to listen to the College Ball Show, you can subscribe to the Rope It Up Radio podcast anywhere. I mean, a whole lot of different places, whether it's iTunes, Player FM, Spreaker, Stitcher, TuneIn, SoundCloud, like every every Mixcloud, like so many different places. Um, We're also part of the Grueling Truth Sports Podcast Network, and that can be subscribed all across several, several platforms. 
and the Grueling True Sports Podcast Network is available on iHeartRadio, and also you can stream it on Spotify. Um, head on over to thegruelingtruth.net. That's the gruelingtruth.net. Excuse me. It's football, basketball, boxing, baseball, everything in between. Head on over to thegruelingtruth.net. they got a great sponsor over there, mybookie.ag. You can read an article. You can listen to a podcast. While you're at it, place a bet. There's a link it right to mybookie.ag. And this microphone wire is just driving me crazy. I don't know what is going on with it. It's not flickering like before a couple months back. I'm going to go ahead and bring in my co-host, Marshall. What's going on, Marshall, man? How you doing? I, I have a favor to ask. Uh, I know it's the time of the year for college football, but could we also, after this podcast, do a 15-minute basketball rant episode where you hit play and I just start going on and off about this uh, goal. I, I, I need I need a basketball rant podcast, Chris, because I'm, I'm fed up with all these damn alerts about Golden State. But moving from that, and again, if we want to do a surprise pod, I could definitely do one. Very colorful adjectives. Um, I'm good. Uh, coached the basketball team day. We had a tournament. Uh, girls lost their first game, but we got a we got a life still left. It's a double elimination tournament, so hope they'll get a win. And then we have a Thanksgiving break, so I have, I'm not teaching kids for a good nine days in a row, so I can regain some sanity and watch a lot of college football. Um, well, there you have yeah, it. Besides, besides that, man, life's good. But God, I'm I'm, I'm fed up. But it, you know, that's a different sport. You know, folks on college football, as you said we're getting very close to the end of the season. Every year we do this show, it's like, you remember like a couple weeks ago when, you know, uh, whoever was undefeated or remember that game a couple weeks ago when that team, you know, it, it's crazy how fast the season does go. You, you always say that it's the most fun regular season out of any sport in the country. And with that being said, you know, we, we never really get a really a week off. Now, um, maybe last weekend was not as entertaining as weekends before, but, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a fun college football show. I, I regain my thoughts now. And I always click on ESPN um, to kind of go through the scores as we do our show. And it's kind of funny that we have not talked about this team much this year. But I'll do a quick little breakdown of uh, UAB, and then we'll start off with our show. For most people that don't know, UAB two years ago did not have a football team. Last year, they get a football team. Uh, I believe they got seven or eight wins and went to a bowl game and won. This year, they're having an even better year, and they're 9-1. and one. So we normally like to start off with college football news it, to start off an episode of something's big. Now, this isn't national picture big, but think of a football program that did not exist over two seasons ago. And the first year after being brought back, they go to a bowl game, and this year they're 9-1. and one. So the same Bama, and Bama, I'm sure Bama would kill them, and they couldn't be on the field with Clemson. But for a true good college football story, in a sport, Chris, where almost all the news you ever hear is negative and bad about coaches, players, media, whatever, I, I kind of wish that this story would spread a little bit more because it's just it's crazy to fathom what this team has done in the time frame. And so I just wanted to start the show off on a positive note um, with UAB. Nine and one, hell of a year. Their year's not even over yet. And, you know, over 700 days ago, this team did not have a college football program. So props to them. Um, mix it up a little bit with a positive news to start off our show. Yeah, it's a good call. It's a very good call. Um, so like I was saying, as far as Bama, geez, Bama just dominated another team. Another, It's the first time they've actually shut out ranked opponents back-to-back back weeks, 24-0, to zero. although that did fit under the spread, though, didn't it? Pretty sure. Uh, well, I didn't, I didn't they win 29 nothing and the spread was 24? Or no, am I thinking LSU? LSU uh, was 29. This one's 24. I, oh, thought, oh, I thought it was yeah, higher than 24. Uh, I can't remember. But either way. Yeah, um, right around there. Yeah, it was it was definitely right around in the, in the same ballpark, actually, of what uh, – it may have been more, though, in a sense, dude, because they were on the road doing that. But anyway – um, Clemson and Boston College actually had a, for a chunk of the game, a competitive game. And then mm-hmm. Clemson, you know, turned it up 27-7. to 7. They uh, they ended up, you know, clearing enough space there. Georgia, you know, with Holyfield and Swift, 
especially Swift, uh, they are just grounding and pounding. They got that running game going. They took care of Auburn 27-10 right when Auburn um, had just started to see a little bit of hope and got ranked. They kicked them right down the street. And, uh, you know, stuff like that happens. LSU in a competitive game with Arkansas ended up getting the job done 24-17. to Washington looked great on the road at Colorado 31-7. to um, Ohio, State looked, Ohio State looked really good on the road as well. Um, against Michigan State, 26-6. to Defense actually showed up, which is something that uh, had been a ha- head-scratcher for most of the year. Penn State beat a just flat Wisconsin team at this point. Um, Iowa State kept it moving against Baylor, Baylor at home, 28-14. to They got a big matchup coming against Texas. Iowa was the 9.5-point favorite. I think it went to 10 as high as I saw. I don't think it ever got that much higher, but it didn't matter. Northwestern won 14 to 10. They are now in the Big Ten championship game from the west side there, um, you know, of that conference, the Big Ten. So uh, it'd be interesting to see what their mentality is like. You know, is there a letdown? Some people are saying letdown for this Gophers game. Um, If the Gophers hadn't showed up like they hadn't showed up all year almost um i think there'd be a better chance for a letdown but all you got to do is turn on that tape northwestern and and they see that purdue game with the ghost they go okay wait a second we can't just walk in there and think we're just going to easily beat them we got to actually go out there 100 percent focused like we need the game but they really don't need it they really don't need it it's really crazy with northwestern this year like they started out the year not looking that good. What were they, like one and three, I believe? They they beat Purdue mm-hmm. right out the gate, but then they lost three in a row. And, you know, losing 20 to 17 to Michigan, that's not, you know, a, a big deal. Um, but they were up in that game, I think 17 to zip. So that's what the yeah, big deal were. was. Duke looked really good in that game. I remember that, 21 to seven. Um, and they lost to uh, uh oh yeah Ak- Akron and or Akron I should say and, and LeBron doesn't play tight end or anything like that so there's no excuse there but then they got on a roll they you know they they won the important games anyway they definitely gave uh Notre Dame a, a really good test they beat Wisconsin when they had to Iowa and Michigan State and that basically wrapped it up on that side so kudos to Northwestern but it is kind of weird how they went about, you know, getting to the conference final um, this year. A couple of uh, uh, games that stand out. You know, we were look. You know, we we're kind of looking at that Iowa game, going really nine and a half, ten. I don't know, man. And also that Tennessee Kentucky game. Tennessee was a clear favorite in that, and it may kind of thought like, wow, huh. But on the other side of it, sometimes when you've had a good run like Kentucky had, and you know, they, they did lose again, and, and it was a big game. It was a, a, a huge moment for them. They could have went to the conference final, and it kind of felt like the hungover, you know, team, the hangover, I should say, hung over to the next week. 24-7, to 7, it was their ugliest game uh, thus far. And then, like I said at the beginning of the show, man, um, those big 12, you know, matchups, Oklahoma – Oklahoma State Beth won forty eight to forty seven. A lot of drama near the end of that. We'll get into some of these games. I'm just kind of briefly going over them. And then Texas and Texas Tech, another shootout, forty one to thirty four. And you know, we talked about, yeah, you know, Oklahoma State is coming back, you know, to the pack or whatever. They 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 came into the game with five losses. Um, or four losses, I should say. I think they were five and four. Yeah, they were five and four. And uh, we thought, well, sure, it doesn't mean as much, but it sure does to the players, to the team, to the uh, both programs, the fan base. Obviously, it's a big rivalry. Um, maybe it's not. Of course, it's not Oklahoma, Texas. But it has given us a lot to talk about, a lot of entertainment. And this one – was no different. Cornelius, the Oklahoma State 
uh, quarterback just had a hell of a day. 34 for 53, 501 in three touchdowns. Um, if you look at, you know, the other side of it, Murray had another game where he, he uh, went over 400 yards total, you know, total yards. I think it, he's done that a handful of times this year. 21 of 29, 349 in the touchdown, and he added 66 yards on the ground. Brooks and Sermon both went over 100. Um, 353 on the ground <laughs> yards rushing and, and they did have a hundred yard runner, um, did Oklahoma state. But when the other side has almost three of them, God, you just look at some of these stats in this game, Marshall, and it just, it just blows you away. I mean, the running side is, is the major stuff for Oklahoma. Now, obviously, it's not like Murray didn't throw for a bunch of yards and, and Brown had eight for 142, but Oklahoma State to get to 500. And you look, they had Wallace at 10 catches, 220, and then another guy, Johnson, had 11 for a buck 28. Just a score fest. And then at the end of the game, you know, you, you can kind of give your take on the game. But then when we got to the end of the game, I really want to hear what you thought about you know, Oklahoma State, the Cowboys going for two and going for the win rather than messing with anything else that game. What would you think of the game, and then what would you think of them going for two like that? I, I think that Oklahoma's defense improved after the Texas debacle. And I think they did simplify it, but I think now it's kind of coming back to it is still a defense that lacks skillful players. And one of their games where they came back was against TCU, whose offense is, I would say, pitiful. And Kansas State, who I wish I would have realized they suck so bad because I probably could have made a a couple grand off them this year. Um, So now they play a team that's a little more talented again. Now we're back to the Oklahoma defense that is improved slightly but still has issues. Oklahoma State does not really have a great win on the year, so this was kind of a game they wanted, obviously. Um, Bedlam is always a close matchup. The 21-point spread, to me, actually seemed a little intriguing. I, I was maybe a little too high in Oklahoma's defense, but um, that, that spread, if you bet Oklahoma State, that was a, a walk in the park, easy bet. Um, so uh, just a typical Bedlam game. I remember watching with my buddies in Vegas last year the same game, and it was just – Baker against uh, 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 Mason uh, – what the hell is that guy's name? Rudolph. Um, Rudolph, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just offense nonstop. I would say they even put on a better show than this game you just said. And the game where it just happened recently was a score fest too. Um, so, with that being said, you know, sometimes I'm a little skeptical on coach going for two. But in this situation – I'm really not that against it. I mean, you're in a game where it's basically a coin flip. You're going into overtime. It's a 50-50 game. Your offense is going to score. Their offense is going to score. Um, I didn't mind the decision. Now, the pass sucked. The the play call Oklahoma State made was a simple have a receiver, their best receiver, run an out route. And he did that, and he was open. But for a lot of college quarterbacks, when you're on the – center of the field and you're throwing a complete out route which requires a ton of arm strength if that ball is is left short at in the slightly bit the receiver is going to not be able to get or the db will knock it down and when you do take the risk of doing a a play with everything on the line you got to perform and i know that quarterback had a great day but for that situation the correct play was called the receiver ran the proper out and the quarterback simply just couldn't get it there i don't know if his feet weren't set i don't know if he just misread the cover, something, but he didn't make the throw, and they came up short. Um, for Oklahoma, that was a great win because it still keeps them in with the outside chance of making it to the Final Four. With Oklahoma State, that's just a tough loss to suffer. You play the hell of a game. You call the right play. Your quarterback happens to make one bad throw on the day, and you go back to um, you know getting ready to wrap up your year with kind of probably a, a sick feeling in your stomach, Chris. Yeah, that's a good way to put it, and just to just to get to the point where you're down by a single point on the fourth and 12 play too, great pass and catch there too. That, that was a nice play. Um, yeah. 
it's you know I don't know I'm kind of in between too I'm not I guess if it would have been even more of a meaningful game I would may, maybe if they're both had like one loss right you know maybe that would change my mind and I would say what the hell are you thinking go to overtime dude you got a hot quarterback blah 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 but why not just go for it I mean what do you got to lose you, you're going to be either five and five. Or you're going to be bowl eligible. You know what I mean? So it's not like it's do or die, you know, in that moment. So, yeah, you know, I can't sit there and act like maybe I would have a different point of view. You know, like I said, if if they were both one-loss teams or something like that. But uh, it was enjoyable. That's for damn. It was very enjoyable. Um, And actually, we did a show last week in, in Wake Forest. In North Carolina State uh, played on Thursday. That was a really good game. Wake uh, got the W there. I mentioned that Boise State Fresno. Fresno looked pretty strong in that game, and, and Boise just kind of worked their way back into it. Got the the the, the victory, um, knocking off Fresno. So now Fresno is not going to be ranked anymore. I doubt they get ranked from here out. They've been ranked for a while, but that's how it is when it's the 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 non-power, you know the non-power five, you got your shot. You're not going to move up barely at all, but, um, you know, it is what it is. It's a good game though. Very good game. Um, the other shootout I mentioned, Texas tech and and Texas 41 to 34, Texas tech drops to five and five. Whereas the Longhorns move on to seven and three. As I mentioned, they do have a big game coming up against Iowa state. Um, Ellinger, had a big, big day, threw for four TDs. Um, you know, it's kind of weird because when you look at how the game was going, it, you know, it it didn't necessarily look like – it, it kind of looked – I mean, Texas was strong. I mean, they had – what did they have? Like, a, I think a 17-point lead, right? Yeah, 17-point lead. This is uh, – well into the third quarter when they did get that uh, field goal to, to, to go up, um, yeah, 27 to 10. And uh, um, there was even a fumble after that. And I thought they were going to score on that, but the Texas Tech did step up. They came storming back, though. They got a touchdown, but then Texas Tech increased it to 30, or sorry, Texas increased it to 34 to 17. And I think, all right, well, that's probably it. But with some of these games, especially in the Big 12, you know, years ago, not not that long ago, but it was kind of like this in the Pac-12 uh, as well. But, man, there's just – they just kept coming back and coming back. And right when you think, oh, they got it, a field goal, two touchdowns later, it's tied 34-34. And right on cue, seven-play drive, 75 yards, just over a minute, minute 24. And they go right back up on, on them and end up winning the game 41-34. Big numbers just overall on both sides. 4-4. Um, four, four. Dang, I didn't realize he had such a great day. 37-47, 444 yards, four touchdowns, no picks. Uh, the youngster looked very good, as I mentioned. Uh, uh, Ellinger had a good game. You know, it just – it just fit that Big 12 shootout. Once again, these games were maybe not the exact same type of style. It didn't have the two-point conversion drama at the end. But a lot of these Big 12 games, man, when it's high-powered offense against high-power offense, you just look at them and you just can't count it out. There's at, there's times, Marshall, where I'm working and I'm at the bar, right, and I'm looking up at the TV, and someone says, ah, dude, they're going to, you know, it's over now. I'll be like, nah, dude, just give it a little time, and all of a sudden, boom, scores high. And that's just, that's how these go, these Big 12 shootouts go, and they've been going this way for years now. Yeah, and i got to make a confession. I, I was watching Texas play a couple weeks ago, and Gus Johnson was calling the game, and he kept calling the Texas wide receiver, Little Jordan Humphrey. Now, I can't even try to do the best announcing voice in the game, but he kept calling him Little Jordan. And I was watching Texas Tech do the, the game, too, this recently we're talking about, and the announcers were calling him Little Jordan. I'm like, man, 
that kid must have a pretty cool nickname because he's the opposite of little. He's one of the best receivers I've seen in college football all, play all year. In that game against Texas Tech, he had the game-winning touchdown catch. He had eight catches, a buck 59. But so I was like, I got to check. His name is actually little apostrophe Jordan. I didn't know that. I thought that was a, a Gus Johnson nickname thing, and he does it so smooth. And then whoever's calling the game recently added it. But I didn't know his name's little Jordan. But props to him with the sick name because he ain't little. And he's probably going to go in the NFL and be a pretty damn good receiver because every game I've watched this year, whether it was against uh, Oklahoma, Texas Tech, uh, West Virginia, the dude can straight play football. Um, and with, with the, the only bad news really about uh, Texas Tech was Jed Duffy had two awful, awful fumbles in the red zone and, and, and threw a pick. It, he got stripped on, the, I believe, on the 15-yard line near his own sidelines. He got stripped on a, another play where he's trying to reach for an extra couple of yards. And if not for those turnovers, they're, they're in overtime or win the game. Um, I, I, again, I, it's hard to rip on a guy that's 37 to 47 for 444, but he did not have an A plus game. He had about an A minus game. Because as a quarterback, when you're a runner like he is, you simply can't waste two incredible drives, led mainly by your arm and feet itself, but to have two fumble turnovers in the red zone that were momentum killers, um, that, that was really kind of the only true mistake. He made it. I mean, and he's not even the starting quarterback. We, we keep seeing Jet Duffy put up sick numbers, and, and Bowman, who uh, many say is a better pocket passer than him, not a runner, it, it, it has had just a collapsed lung injury, reactivated it last week, and then that's a weird thing. But um, another fun game to watch. Um, and if you're a Texas fan, to summarize this and going back and forth, they almost had a deja vu. Because last year, the Texas Tech, came back from 17 down in Austin to save, Cliff, to save Cliff Kingsbury his job. This year, they were damn close from coming back from 17 down again. So, you know, those Texas fans, Chris, in that fourth quarter, they're like, seriously? Are we going to yeah, blow another 17-point right. lead to Tech? Not, dude, come on now. I don't want to do this again. What, don't, don't you recall last year? Uh-oh, uh-oh. But they got it done thanks to little Jordan. That's, uh, that, that's cool. I, 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 I'm, that's me being a little kid, but I, I just thought I just thought that was a Gus Johnson kind of move, and I, I would never doubt it. But that's his actual name, and I and I think that dude's gonna be impressive. He, he's he's played good football. And Texas, seven and three on the year. Um, they got a lot of hype going into the season, Chris. A lot. Some of it I thought was over deserved. But and then they lose to Maryland. But since then, you know, they're seven and two after a Maryland hiccup, and, and they've. You know, had pretty damn good season. Not great in their standards, I'm sure, but they've had a pretty good year for all the hype they got. And Herman is finding a way with a talented receivers, uh, a, a great D, and a quarterback who's made massive improvement from where he was last year. I don't think I call it a great defense, though. It still needs to come but, around. Uh, you, you're right. It, last year's defense was good. This year, you're right. It, it's it's been it's re, it's gone backwards a little bit. Well, now bit. they're I, like I think more so last year. Yeah. Yeah, well, now they're I, opposite, you know. Yeah. Under Strong, they had a defense, but they didn't have an offense. Then last, or last maybe like the last year of uh, Strong, it started kind of tipsy-turvy and where the defense started faltering a little bit, too. Offense yeah. picked up a little bit, but it was kind of wishy-washy, and they were just inconsistent. Uh, but yeah, the, the offense picked up sometime last year, and has kept going, but yeah, that now they, you know, that's kind of the thing, man. It, we we talk about a variety of times throughout the the season is like it's just hard to recruit for both sides intensely. You know, it's like you kind of gotta. True. What's your specialty? Okay, go with that. Um, and obviously, we know what Herman's specialty is, and you can see it's working, no doubt about it. Um, and you're right; they're still having a really good season. Some people thought they were going to be a little bit better. Some people thought. Yeah, I, I think they're having a pretty good season just in general. Um, I mentioned, you know, Clemson finishing off uh, Boston College in the s- second half. They wrapped up in the ACC Atlantic Division. They're fourth in a row. That's a school record. And uh, Dabo Sweeney now, um, since 2015, is his record as a head coach at Clemson is 15-2 and two when facing 
AP top 25 teams. Um, pretty impressive, no doubt about it. A couple other kind of big games out there. Pittsburgh running back, I think it's Oliason. He had 15 carries and 235 yards to three scores and just a butt whipping over Virginia Tech, 52-22. to 22. Um, University of Davidson. Now, we know Davidson for one player in general, right? But that's basketball. We're talking football here. Now, they piled up an astonishing 789 yards rushing, the most ever historically, whether you're talking about FSC or FBS or whatever the hell you're going to talk about, they broke the record. The problem is, and here's the, like, it's already astounding, right? But then it becomes even more unbelievable because they lost the freaking game, 56 to 52. And Davidson not long ago had already broken a Russian record, uh, I think this season, maybe last season. I forgot the stat on that, but that was freaking ridiculous. And I remember seeing this uh, highlight reel ending um, by Murray State. They were down 31 points in the second quarter. They came storming back. Ended up winning 40 to 38 on a crazy kickoff return that was 100% legal. It wasn't like the Miami Duke one or some other ones we've seen. This one was straight up one guy, no pitching. He just did some fancy footwork, went left, went right, and all of a sudden they won the game, I think, with about four or five seconds left on the clock as he was going through the end zone. So they uh, they made a big, big comeback. Those are a couple of things that kind of uh, – Stuck out to me. Um, if you look at, you know, my Minnesota Gophers, they fire their uh, defensive coordinator, get back to the basics, and uh, just shockingly go out and handle a Purdue team that's much improved, that has a great, you know, like a up and coming coach. It, they've been playing really good on both sides of the ball. They beat what is it, three ranked teams at the time they played them. This year, of course, they, you know, they beat Ohio State. Um, I don't know what the hell got into that defense. The defensive line looks just more active. Um, the linebackers kind of pulled their weight. They haven't always been doing that. Um, of course, dumbing down the scheme, kind of going back to the basics have helped. But um, it's just, you know, you we talked about this as far as a coordinator, you know, when, when coaches, head coaches or coordinators, whichever side of the ball, when they get fired, you, you just talked about Oklahoma, right? And that happened earlier this year. Um, yeah. When that happens the next week, you generally, there's just, you generally play better. You just do. I, I don't know what it is. I think it's just like, Hey dude, you got that guy fired. You know, it's almost like yeah, it just puts some fire in your belly. It lights a flame under your ass. What, however you want to say it, whatever cliche you want to say, it gets your chili hot to take Brewster, Tim Brewster's line. You know, whatever <laughs> it is, whatever it is, it always works. But I, <clears throat> So I anticipated, even on the Vikings Weekly show that we do, me and the host over there, we said, hey, they're they're going to they're going to play better. This will probably be one of their better defensive efforts um in you know in the Big 10 anyway. But we had no clue that they were going to come out and do this and then, you know, on the offensive side of the ball, um they they uh they have nine starters returning on that side of the ball. Right now they're playing seven starters that are freshmen on the offense and the offense have been playing really good. Um, overall, uh, 0 for 11 on third downs is just like that's that's the defense holding Purdue. Um, I just didn't see a 41 to 10. Um, I did not see a 41 to 10 win, uh, especially against Purdue uh, coming. So hopefully, you know they're five and five, and I really want those bowl practices. So hopefully, either this week, you know Northwestern at home or go on the road 
and uh, upset Wisconsin. And then Wisconsin is uh, kind of a sitting duck for the Badger standards anyway this year. Um, they're not, whatever it's confidence, whether it's coaching, whatever the hell it is, they're not the, the Wisconsin team um, that we've come to know, and I won't say love, but to know and respect. How's that? Um, as far as my second squad out there, the Miami Hurricanes, I'll tell you what, dude. I'll get. I'll say this. You know, I've been I've been complaining about the quarterback, and uh, I was just hoping they'd go with the young buck. And uh, so I got to give Mark Rick credit. He said, you know what? Let's, let's screw it. We're going with the young buck, and let's just stick with the young buck. Let's just do it. And sure enough, first drive, scored a touchdown. They actually looked really good um, on that side of the ball until a fumble here on the running back, fumble here on the wide receiver. I think the other one was a tight end. A couple of them were crucial. And that that was the game right there. That was the, the freaking game. So the offense was moving the ball. They scored some points this week, but then they, they, they had a bunch of turnovers and key turnovers. So – it's like they're either not productive and they have too many three and outs or they just throw bad passes or whatever, you know, with the with the uh, redshirt senior who just, you know, isn't worth a damn right now. And they just can't get out of their way right now. And here they are in another losing streak. And I'll say this. Now, I'm not ready to knee-jerk and, and, and fire Mark Rick. I'm not ready for that. I do need him to bring in a coordinator or hand over the the reins maybe to the, the current coordinator. Um, whatever it is, I, they got to do something there. Um, but he's been real streaky at Miami thus far. Um, if you look at his first year, right? Won four in a row, then lost four in a row then won out the rest of those games from the year before. Now, he did get on a 15-game winning streak, so that's why I'm not ready to, to fire him. But then they lost four. Then again, they won five in a row, and now they're losing in a row again. So that's been disheartening, discouraging, however you want to put it. Um, the way the, 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 the team was set up, I, I thought that they kind of – peaked last year and that next year and the year after they're going to look pretty damn good but you know it's it's just frustrating it is it's very frustrating right now and even you know usc right now usc is not you know up to par this season miami doesn't look like any you know enough consistency like they had last year even even though they had their ups and downs they were still finding ways to win. Um, they just they just seem a little bit more balanced. And, and, but offensively this year, it's been rough, and it hasn't been the defense's fault. A lot of times, if the defense does give up points, it's because they uh, you know they got put in a in a bad situation from the offense. So, a little frustrating, no doubt about it. Um, but like I said, if you look at recruiting. You look at the foundation that he's building, it, it's way better than it was. It just sure doesn't he, – the offense stuff, dude. He, he either needs to just go all the way with this kid for the rest of the year, he better, and then next year he can come fresh with him. So he did get a lot of experience this year, so he could still find positives out of it. But at some point, the offense needs to pick up, uh, just just bottom line. Um I also saw, here's another team that we followed, you know, my co-host Marshall follows, follows this, Missouri. Didn't they win? Missouri won last week, right? Or am I just they, they ultimately beat Van, easy? They beat Vandy. It, they uh, beat Vandy. 33-28. Yeah, so it, it wasn't impressive, but, I mean, they got a W, which is, uh, I, well, speaking of coaches, I, I do hope Odom does go. I this. This team's never going to make great strides with him, but they did get a win. Um, they were like an 18-point favorite, but, you know, a win is a win against Vanny. They won by five at home. Uh, Locke had another uh, decent performance. But, yeah, uh, Mizzou did get a W, so uh, I'll take that. It's just and same same with USC. I, I hope both my teams that year for USC and Mizzou both get new coaches next year. 
uh, USC, it's just Clay Helton's just not a great coach. 14 games. 14 games skid. Wow. I didn't know that it had been 14 in a row that uh, Cal had lost to USC either. Wow. That's crazy. I, I just I, – I, I, Clay Helton needs to go. Barry Odom needs to go. Uh, they, there's two teams who have pretty good traditions. I mean, Mizzou I – mean, USC's got a long tradition in Mizzou, but Mizzou since 2000 has been a pretty damn good team. They just need new guys atop the pedestal um, to just help make the team better. Uh, Freaking Clay Helton is, I believe, one in twelve as an underdog coach. That that's completely, I don't know, that's completely unacceptable. Because <laughs> nor normally, you maybe don't have a better coach team, but your athletes are just as skillful at USC. You're not getting ran out the gym in a Pac-12 conference, or you shouldn't be. So Clay Helton needs to go, and Odom has had his time in Mizzou. And I know that when Pinkle left with the Hodgkin's lymphoma disease, it was kind of a, a spur of the moment. We got to make a decision, but he's had three years now. He has a quarterback who plays good against bad teams and can't win against ranked teams. I just need both those teams to make changes. Now, to get a little outside the box, as we you know, we always break down the big games, but there are a couple of uh, side notes that I thought would be fun quickly. Um, one thing I realized, in the Baylor-Iowa State game, there was a little bit of a fight. Now, I, I, I never understand why football players try to throw quote-unquote punches when other guys were in helmets, but nonetheless, um, a fight occurred. <laughs> and, in, and in the fight, there was a sideline warning given to the entire Baylor team. Now, I, I, normally I don't think that happens, but it did. So later in the game, as Baylor's coming back or attempting to come back, the Baylor quarterback made a little snide comment to the ref and got a personal foul. That ended up tossing him out of the game. I don't recall really ever seeing that, but since the whole team was given a warning, when he was on the bench drinking water, like the, the defense got the personal foul, but it was a team-given foul. The quarterback was then tossed out of the game, when Baylor was getting on some momentum because they were still time in the game, and then he was throwing out himself. So kind of a strange, goofy, crappy way to lose your quarterback when his one personal foul he was given didn't affect him, and he probably didn't. He probably wasn't thinking about that when he just made a dumb comment. Next thing you know, he's done, and Iowa State holds on to a victory. Um, also, our Raging Cajuns are now 5-5 five and five on the year. That is our adopted team of the podcast. We are looking to go bowling this year. We've always cheered for them. I just kind of picked them as our squad, and since then we've supported them. Um, another crazy side note, Old Dominion beat North Texas. North Texas has had a pretty damn good year. They beat Arkansas in the start of the year pretty handily. I believe they start off the year 5-0. and um, They're now 7-3, and so they were 7-2. and Old Dominion has now beat Virginia Jeez. Tech, Western Kentucky, who is – that was a goofy game that we picked. It was just a, a weird game, but they won. And then they get smacked in the mouth last week against Middle Tennessee. Now they come back and beat North Texas, <laughs> and they were down 14-0 to and down 28-10 to at half, and they came back to win. That Old Dominion team is, has to be one of the goofiest – I don't know if you use overachieving, underachieving. I'm not sure which verb is correct for the 3-7 and seven style. But yeah, I think they're they overachieving got it done. still. I, yeah. And more side notes, because wait, there's more, Chris. Pittsburgh is now 5-1, and one, leading their part of the Coastal. So I'm not sure which is more crazy, the fact that Pittsburgh is leading the, a division in the ACC or Northwestern clinch the Big Ten. And a little more, then we'll move on. Utah State, who we've not talked about, we probably should have a little bit, won 62-24. to 24. Utah State lost their first game of the year against Michigan State in a very, very, very close game at the very end. Since then, they've won nine games in a row, and they've been kicking the tar out of people. They're ranked 14th. That surprised me. I, I did not realize they jumped up that high. But if you're 9-1 and one and you're yeah, me neither. people every week, yeah, I, I mean, I knew, they did, I knew they were having a good year, Chris, but yeah. I didn't realize they jumped up quite so fast. But, hey, I, I mean, with a, with a record like that, not many teams are doing much better. Props to them. And – that is my little side note column for the week. But a uh, nice one by our They're going to end with Boise. They're going to end with so, Boise, too. Oh, ooh, ooh, that, 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 that would be a good game. That would be a very, a very good game, very good game to watch. And, yeah, so and, uh, 
and I know I mentioned this last week quickly, um, Cincinnati, South Florida. Cincinnati pretty much owned that game. I thought it would be a little bit closer. I mean, it wasn't a blowout, but uh, Cincinnati won 35-23. And if you did follow my gambling pick last week, I said bet Wazoo, bet the Cougars, bet Mike Leach. They got the job done pretty easily. Colorado got up 7 nothing. After that, Mike Leach and Wazoo yeah. said, hey, we actually want to win the game. So, just, uh, yeah, you're, we're going to take over now. So, that is Marshall's funny side notes of the week. So, just a bunch of random stuff of teams we followed that a little fun, mix up a little bit, throw some packs in. Yeah, definitely. And uh, now, you know, when you look at week 12, and I don't think we really have to go through the rankings, do we? Is there something that – is there any kind no. of uh, – no controversy, Gosh, right? No, right. not that I'm aware of. Screw those rankings. You know, this is probably the most, like, lightest controversy rankings ever since they started, isn't it? It probably is. Because right why? now people, hey, are usually, again? people are usually people screaming, are you know, screaming, pulling their heads out, or their hair out right about now, aren't they normally? Yeah, and I think it really is the fact that we're playing for a silver medal. I think that – People just don't think Bama's going to lose, and and that's my opinion. So how controversial rankings can you have when you have one team that's pretty much going to take home the ship? It's kind of like the Golden State thing. You know, go okay, Golden State's going to the finals. Now or the Patriots are making the playoffs. It's kind of one of those things of, like, unless something crazy happens, are we really going to debate who Bama gets kicked the tar out of? Like, okay, Bama's going to play Notre Dame in the first round. Good luck, Notre Dame. Bama's going to play Oklahoma. Uh, maybe, but I mean, maybe last year. I just, I, I think with Bama being so high up, Chris, that leads to the uh, lack of maybe debate and fun controversy we usually have at this point. Yeah, and and also, you know, if LSU had won, we would have been all sorts of debate. So yeah, it's true. It could be that, and also I think people are kind of getting like they're kind of calibrating with what to expect. It's so they start to look at kind of like the BCS, as much as people talk shit about this, I say this almost every year, <coughs> they, they formed this whole system. And it was never the BCS's problem that it, you form this, you know, the, this way to rank stuff with all these polls and this, that, and the third, right? And other rankings and filters and all that. But it was never the fault of you know, the system that they only had two people, one and two. They needed one and four, and that thing would have, you would even barely have to fix it, you know. But I, I really think people are just starting to understand before the rankings come out on Tuesday and go, you know what? Yeah, they're going to be up there because look at their resume. And so people are really starting to, because a lot of times a lot of these debates were like, dude, I hear you, but who you beat? Or I hear you, but you lost to a 500 team. You know, a lot of times that was the debate anyway. So I think it's kind of a mixture of everything. But week 12, it just it is light on the rank versus rank games. Like even the rank versus rank games, some people may go, oh, really? Cincinnati and Central Florida, huh? Syracuse, Notre Dame, we talking old school Big East basketball or are we talking football? I, I, I'm not sure. Now, Texas, Iowa State. To people that are in the know, know it's a good game. But, you know, it doesn't scream marquee matchup. You know what I mean? Um, but, it and obviously, a lot of people are on almost bye weeks, you know, this week as well. Because rivalry week is next week. It's the last game of the regular season. And so some of it, you know, is, it comes down to that. And also, you know, like I said, it just didn't think the, some of these games you wouldn't even think one of the teams might be ranked, you know, so it wouldn't be any rank versus rank type thing. But the way it's turned out, Iowa State definitely the uh, 16th ranking. But as we know, you know, we could sit there and say, oh, you know, I think it was back to back light weekends or at least what we thought were light weekends. And one of the weekends broke a record for what was it, 11? I think it was 11. Um, Teams getting knocked out of the twenty five or top twenty five, and I, I want to say there was like two in the top four or something like that. So basically, what I'm saying is, all hell broke loose the last time we thought we had a light weekend. Um, 
So keep that in mind. I'm not guaranteeing anything, but just keep that in mind because, like I said, college football regular season, who the hell knows? You start looking ahead, you start looking ahead to rivalry week, and, oh, this team's got to lose, we got to win, and then we can get in. No, nope, no, nope, you got to look at the team right in front of you. And right in front of the Notre Dame Irish is the Orangemen from Syracuse. Obviously, you know, speaking of the finish line, right now, Iowa, or not Iowa, both of them do, but Notre Dame can just, they can see the finish, the finishing line. You know, it's, it's in their sights. It's right there to complete the undefeated regular season. Um, but Syracuse, man, they've been riding high of late, and they've been getting a big boost from their offense. Um, you know, they, they've either beaten ranked teams or just barely lost them like they did earlier this year with Clemson, but beat Clemson the year before. Um, if you're going to look and say, well, shit, I mean, what they have left, even the last, you know, even, you know, with Florida State last week, you, you knew that wasn't going to happen. But I don't know. You'd say, well, this is kind of their best last chance. Because, you know, yeah, you got to travel to USC, but it's not like it's going to be cold. And, you know, we just went over them. They're right now, they're 5-5. Five and five. So, it's not like they're a huge threat right now. But before the FSU game, I will say this. They, they, they had about, I think it was three straight games that were close. That were very close. And you thought, huh, they're, they're kind of like a bend but don't break, and then they finally break. And it kind of made me feel that way. The Florida State win doesn't do much to change my mind. Now, Book, Book is hurt. They're back with Wimbish because Book is hurt. They're kind of going back and forth. Book had a, a good chunk of games. Now he's hurt. Um, I don't know, man. It's, is this the time that Notre Dame finally loses and Syracuse, you know, who, who sneaks up on big teams the last couple of years – under this coach, they just got something going here, man. I got to say, I mean, who would have thought they'd be 12th by the end of the year? Not me. I sure as hell wouldn't have guessed that. Now, after I saw them against Clemson, I may think they'd be ranked. But, you know, I mean, they beat Clemson last year, and they didn't get ranked this high. So they, they're on the up and up. Can they sneak up? and just completely screw over Notre Dame before the end of the season, Marshall. I do think that Syracuse's coach does a great job of preparing the teams for these upsets. Um, it's kind of been their M.O. Um, I believe if you're a Syracuse fan, what you're seeing this year is what you were probably expecting next year as a fan. Um, a couple of years ago, he gave his, you know, or it might have been last year, he gave his uh, very passionate speech about how he's going to turn the program around. And obviously a lot of coaches always say that. You heard that from Tennessee this year. You heard that from Florida. You heard basically from every team with a new coach. But he's actually doing it. So I, I, I don't think there's any reason they can't. Um, with, with Wimbush back at quarterback, we saw the massive difference of offensive production that Ian Book used compared to Wimbush. I mean, it, the, the numbers of, of average yards per play, I believe it went – if memory serves, they went from about like four, four point two yards per play, and for a couple of games when uh, Book took over, it was going up to like almost seven yards a play. So I, I expect the offense to go backwards. It, it won't be as good as it had been. Um, Syracuse clearly doesn't care about playing tough teams now. Normally, when they won games under their head coach, it's been at home. Um, but they have the motivational angle. They're having a great year. Um, they have nothing to hold back on. Notre Dame does have the pressure. They do have the chance of going. They have a little more weight on their shoulders. Um, so hell, I'll, I'll I'll go. I'll take Syracuse with the win. Um, I mean, this Notre Dame team. I maybe it may be the going back to a quarterback who's not been as good as your prior quarterback was would be enough for Syracuse to pull off an upset. So I will take the Orange um, with some Donovan McNabb flashbacks to pull off the upset against Notre Dame and, and gratefully and gladly end uh, Notre Dame season because I've just i never cheered for him and I still won't. So go go Orange and pull off the win. Hey, Carmelo's available too. So I mean, he could come back just for a couple plays a game. 
you know, because he's a free agent True. now. He hit the market. Um, you know, even with Book, there was a couple that that Northwestern game and that uh, Pittsburgh game. No, I just you know named two good programs right now. They're not great, but they're having very good years for them. Like I said, that Wisconsin thing is just. It's just weird. Or not Wisconsin, but the Northwestern thing is just kind of strange, man. It's just because they're six and four. You know what I mean? But they have a really good conference record. That that's what just throws you off. Um, but back to this. What I was going to say though, in those games, their offense started to either get figured out a little bit or whatever. And even it took them a while to to pull away from Army. So and I kind of felt like. Well, okay, this book, he went off for, like like you said, about a good month. Maybe a little – yeah, I think about a month, a month worth of games. He was – they were moving that ball, dude, and he was chucking it around the, the field and whatnot. But it seemed like they kind of caught up to a couple of things. And, uh, and I think overall, you know, you start to get tight. You start to see you're up to 6-0, 7-0, 8-0, 9-0, 10-0, 10-0, and uh, – man – if they're ever ready for a, a, a knock, you know, team to knock them off, I, I do think that is, uh, you know, a, a big potential here. I'm going to go on the other side of it, but I do think they can cover. I really think that. I mean, they're uh, ten and a half right now, ten and a half point underdogs. So I like Syracuse to at least be competitive enough in there. But yeah, I mean you look at it and I'm still going to keep looking at it and I may do something with it because I just, this is, this is the team that's going to knock them off. It really feels that way. It really feels that way. Um, Number 15, Texas versus number 16, Iowa state. Um, You know, the Longhorns were on a nice run and they stumbled back to back weeks. And now it seems like they're kind of getting, getting their groove back. Obviously, they got that win that we talked about earlier. Uh, they narrowly, you know, defeated Texas Tech. Um, you know, and actually, win, lose, win or lose, their last six games were decided by, like, an average of, like, three and a half points. You know what I mean? Um, so, and then you got the Cyclones. I think they've won five in a row. I think two or three of them were against top 20 feet, 25 teams at the time. So that's, I mean, Iowa State is, that's, it's really dangerous here. What is the, what's the spread on this one? Uh, two and a half. Texas is, so, I mean, yeah, and they're at half. home. And they're at home. Yeah. They're freaking at home, dude. So, you know, every, man, almost every bone in my body wants to pick Iowa State here. I really do. But I'm starting to get the feel of, man, you've been on a nice run. You really have. And I don't know. I kind of feel like they're going to drop this game. It's going to be tight. It's going to be a good-ass game. But I don't know. There's something just telling me that that Texas – is going to beat them in a tight game. I think it'll be, well, I can't really say overly high scoring, even though I want to, but, you know, Iowa State has a pretty good defense. Um, whereas Texas Tech, they're giving up 27 and a half a game, and they both play in the Big 12, so you can't just use that excuse. What is the, the Cyclones are 20 points. So, um Ah man, this one's tough, dude. I'm actually gonna go. I'm gonna go the home team again. I'm gonna go Texas. I think Texas will find a way. It may be, you know, one of those situations where I, let's put it this way. I say this a couple times a year too. I feel like it is one of those games that whoever has the ball in their possession will win the game, whether that's kicking a field goal, scoring a touchdown, or the the victory formation. I got Texas in a tight one. Well, I'm never picking Texas. Not with Herman, so I will gladly take Iowa State. Um, <laughs> there, I mean, uh, easy enough. I, as you mentioned, Iowa State's having a hell of a year. Um, if this game was at Iowa State, I would definitely take Iowa State. Yeah, um, so would I. 
the the way the way Iowa and Iowa State play at home, it's crazy that those two teams have such a uh, just for kind of smaller schools in Iowa. Those are two of the worst places you ever want to go play. It's not at LSU, but it's definitely probably top ten scary places to go in the country. So I'll take Iowa State, um, who has that nice quarterback in Prudy, who's a freshman who's just developed and left and right. Um, he's been doing a great job. Well, mind you, last year they beat Oklahoma. They had a third string quarterback who'd been a linebacker. Yep. Um, that 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 coach Campbell, I, they I hope they keep him because I think he can make this program even more elite than it is. I'm not sure he'll never get up to maybe a Bama, LSU kind of level, but from what he's doing with that team, I mean, 10, 15 years ago, I think Iowa State would be mentioned for playing Iowa because it was a rivalry game the second week of the year every year. But besides that, they were nothing. And now I'm using them in a sentence as they have one of the tougher, yeah, they have one of the tougher home field advantages in all in all of the college football. So I hope he continues to grow that program, and I think they're going to be able to keep him. We I, I predicted on our show last year he'd be gone, but he stays. Maybe hopefully he can give a couple more years there, and they sign him to a fat deal. Maybe they'll have something similar to Kirk Ferentz at Iowa. Been there for I believe. I mean, over 15 or 20 years now. So it could be the same kind of deal um, a little bit uh, apart in the state of Iowa. So I'll take them with the win. Um, one game that hasn't been getting a lot of hype, and it's the same at the ABC game. So I'm guessing that means it would be the Kirk Herb yeah. Street uh, ESPN crew. Yeah, it's the primetime uh, game. Yeah, uh, Cincinnati UCF. Um, UCF is still not lost. Okay. And, I mean, that, that Memphis game, I picked them. My God, it was <laughs> – that came down in the last second, but they got the W um, with McKenzie Milton. And you have a Cincinnati team who, as we just mentioned, Iowa State, I'm not sure the last time Cincinnati was good in football. I mean, for I, I think mid-2000s, they were respectable, went to bowl games, but I don't recall them being 9-1 and one any time recently. Yeah, so, Kelly, um, Kelly was there, actually. That's where Kelly came from, from Notre Dame, I believe. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right, you're right. So they had a little, a little, little bit of a window there. But they're definitely back up now, nine and one. You know, American Conference is not incredibly powerful, but it's not a joke. You know, you got shit two teams playing each other that are both ranked right now. Um, from what I've seen from Cincinnati, when I when I have watched them play, they've looked a little like a, a team that has potential, has been a slow first half team, and I don't think their quarterback's that good at all. Now, from a, like a like a, a skillful quarterback, he's average at best from like pocket pass and all that stuff. But from this, from like numbers and the way they play, like when I haven't seen play, they look pretty good. So my my eye test, Chris says that their defense gonna have to play a great game to stop UCF because I just don't believe in their offense entirely. And Cincinnati has beat up on some really bad teams. So I'm taking UCF. I think they're just a more well-rounded in the situation, we want to keep the streak going, kind of have a middle finger to the NCAA of, dude, if we run the table two years in a row, are you really going to not let us sneak in? And the answer probably would be yes, but that would still be a hell of a story. So I'm taking UCF. I know Cincinnati's got a good defense, but I think their quarterback will cost them in this game. Um, it's kind of cool for a, a, a sport that is so heavily based on the top, top teams to have a primetime game that features – uh, two teams outside the Power Five, Chris. I, I like that. I like that ESPN does that. That's something that you, you should be rewarded with media attention when you're having the season both these schools are having. Well, it just so happens to be one of the lightest weeks, too, that they do it. True. <laughs> but, yeah. Fairness, sure. yeah. Well, that's when you do it. That's when you do it. So, I, I agree with what you said there. They did beat Pittsburgh. They looked really good in September. SMU's just okay. They're better than they have been in the in the past. Um, I did see one of their games not long ago. A lot of their games can be like on a Wednesday. So I've actually randomly caught some of that some of that action and watched the second half of these games. A lot of these games are really good. Like you mentioned that Memphis game about a month ago. Um, for me, it does seem like that Temple game was another game that was very tight. Um, it kind of feels like UCF is starting to run on fumes with this run to me. It, it doesn't quite seem like they're running on all cylinders. 
Um, it's just hard. It's hard to go undefeated this long. Now they they haven't been playing, you know, killers, but they did play Pitt and beat them. So I mean, they played some teams, uh, you know, here and there. Obviously, that's kind of what's holding them back um, this year. Because you could say, well, Pitt Pitt's going to the conference final, yeah, but nobody's worth a shit in that side. So it's not not really that big of a deal. Um, so it's kind of I don't know. It's hard to say. But long story short. I'm actually going with Cincinnati, and I know what you're saying. That I mean, that, I, I believe they had a guy named Moore, and he got hurt. I could be wrong with Cincinnati. Maybe that was last year's quarterback. But this guy is a freshman, and I've seen them from time to time, and, and he's put up numbers, but then there's times where you go, yep, there, yeah, he's a freshman, all right, you know. But I'm going to go out on him, and I'm going to go Cincinnati in this one. I'm going to go Cincinnati. So we are on basically some of our, 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 you know, bigger marquee matchups here this week. We were actually on the other side of all of them. So that was cool. I think that's probably a first. That's pretty cool. True. Um, Michigan State at Nebraska, of course, don't let that 3-7 and seven record for the Cornhuskers fool you. Um, they could at least have two more wins, if not three potentially. And Michigan State just fields a quality team most of the time. And they got to be a little uh, butt hurt, I guess you could say, from getting, uh, you know, pretty much handled slowly but surely by Ohio State 26-6 last week. I look for that to be a pretty good hardcore game. The barn burner stuff. Arizona State in Oregon. Here's a shot. You know, we talked about a couple of shocking things. Obviously, uh, um, Davis and having all those freaking rushing yards. Well, this one has to do with rushing yards, but it's on the other side of the, the spectrum here. The Oregon Ducks are averaging less than 100 yards per game. And that is something I do not recall, you know, maybe in the 80s. <laughs> but other than that, I don't, like, by the mid-90s, late 90s, I just can't remember a Duck team. And they're not a great team this year by any stretch. Um, but that that really, ugh, I don't know. And then you got ASU kind of overachieving, continuing to, like, you know, add, add building blocks to their, their program's foundation. That should be a really, really good matchup. <clears throat> um, as far as, like, a couple against the spreads, I kind of feel like Duke, because Clemson had a big win last week, I kind of feel like they're, there's a hangover effect minorly. Not that they're going to lose. They can sneak under the 28 points because Duke still has bowl eligibility excuse me, to, to, to go for. So that's something I'm, I got my eye on. SMU, I think they could lose less than the 9.5 points. I think they could sneak under against Memphis, not totally sure. I really think Syracuse can. I think that ten and a half. I think Syracuse can do it. Um, what was the other one I was going to mention? Oh, and then, um, well, here's some some upsets of the week. Now, I think Wisconsin, who was a four point dog last time I checked at Purdue, I think they're going to get their act together and beat Purdue. Of course, Purdue just got their ass kicked. So there's probably a fire in your belly right there. Maybe that should be under the hardcore barn burner <clears throat> because both those teams really want to win at this point. But I think Wisconsin's going to beat Purdue. And, uh, you know, now that Arizona has their quarterback and he's a real threat because he's healthy, not, you know, like at the beginning of the year where we're both scratching our head going, wait, what's going on? They can't. They're not. I, I'm lost here. What, what's going on? Like, why are they not? Why is he not running? Like, that's his bread and butter. Pass and run. Pass and run. And there's just something in the back of my head. That I don't know what it is, Marshall. But it, I don't. I don't know what it is. But when you got Khalil Tate, who's healthy again, could this? be a place last I think the last game he threw for 355 and threw five touchdowns and we're not even talking about running you know we're not even talking about running right now 
which he can do with something he couldn't do at the beginning of the year. And if you haven't seen Tate, maybe he's been, you know he's been off the radar this year a little bit. You know, it's 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 one of those things where he put up all these yards the last two years, and you know if the team was a little bit better. You know, he potentially could have been in there for like a real Heisman candidate. Um, obviously, some of that, you know, gets lost in, in translation when it comes to actually winning it and how good your team needs to be. But if you're going to look at a sneaky pick, and obviously sitting at five and five, and, and Washington State's been looking really good, I mean, they're a ten and a half point favorite here. I'm just saying, I'm not saying put all your money on it right i'm not saying that to the folks out there but when you when you're really looking at an upset like a true upset one that we didn't necessarily see coming i got my eye on that one a little bit what what else you got for us before we get to the uh the crafty pick by the way the, the crafty pick I even said it when i picked it that i've been taking a lot of risks lately I'm going to go the conservative route, and I should have kept with my risk factor. Uh, sometimes you learn your lesson. But, uh, any, uh, it, you know, I, I was bound to lose. that I'd been on such a streak, but still, still sure. kind of pissed that I didn't, you know, walk that line. I, I felt like, oh, I'll just get the safe one. What else you got for us, we'll, buddy? We'll, I know that, we'll, you know, we'll get Northwestern hot again. and Minnesota is a big game uh, for my Gophers because they're trying to become bowl eligible. Um, what else you got for us before we uh, shut this thing down here? Well, I do like that since I'm only coaching basketball tomorrow, I don't have to worry about teaching school. I'm going to kick my feet up a little bit. Obviously, we've got uh, the Packers in football night, but also my boy Lane Kiffin, Florida Atlantic, they're trying to become bowl eligible. If I wasn't coaching tomorrow, I was actually going to go to the game. It, they're playing North Texas. They're only about eh, 25 minutes from my house, so, so i got to deal with work. But I will kick on uh, Kiffin. He's actually on uh, CBSN tonight at 8.30, so hopefully he gets the job done. Oh, he's on Obviously, CBS Sports Network? Wow, that's a best year yeah. of the big time if you make there. Jeez. Yes, sir. Um, so they're trying to get bowl eligible. Um, obviously, they've not had the year they had last year where they ran the table in the conference. But 5-5, five and five, you know, he's, he's – um, Enjoying Devil, Devin Singletary, who, you know, like that uh, quarterback, or excuse me, the running back for um, Memphis. Uh, his name is uh, Daryl Henderson, okay? 158 carries, 1,446 yards this year. Uh, Singletary is another great running back you don't hear much about, um, who's – I believe got over 3,500 uh, rushing yards in his career. So I'm hoping Kiffin gets the win tonight. Um, my my bet I really like is uh, Texas Tech this week. They're minus six against uh, Kansas State. Um, Kansas State defensively against Oklahoma looked abysmal. Kansas State defensively against Mississippi State. I'm sure now you're going to have people saying that Cliff Kingsbury's job's on the line again. You know, if they don't get full eligible. You know, they have issues. If Texas Tech wins this week, they play uh, Baylor in my, in the back, uh, in my backyard um, the week after, they could finish 7-5. and five. All of a sudden, Cliff is looking good. Um, whether it's Jed Duffy or Bowman, I don't see Kansas State's defense stopping them. I mean, and I know Oklahoma has a phenomenal offense. But when, when you literally don't have a chance to slow a team down at all, I just don't see how they're going to slow down Texas Tech's offense, who is probably going to be pretty pissed off they lost to Texas. And you get rid of a couple of quarterback fumbles and win the game. So I'm taking uh, the Red Raiders minus six with my little uh, pick of the week. And I also like another um, game, as I will scroll through here quickly, uh, with Utah. Or I would maybe tease Utah and tease Texas Tech together. Utah is minus seven. They go to Colorado. Um, Utah has had a very good year. They're seven and three. They're ranked nineteenth. Kyle Whittingham is a great coach. Um, they're playing a team in Colorado who is now two and five in the Pac-12. Okay, this was a team who at one point Chris was four and zero, five and zero, five and one, and they've just been on a nosedive. Are they four and one, five and zero in that in that area? 
and they've just crumbled. Um, you know, you, you blow a 24-point lead at Oregon State. Then you lose to um, Arizona. Then you lose to – last week they lost to Washington State. Now they got to face Utah, and Utah's still on the run for their uh, Pac-12 South title. I just don't see where the momentum is coming um, for a team who's just been on a nosedive after starting off the year. I believe they maybe even got ranked 24th or 25th or were super close. So T is Utah with Texas Tech, and I would also bet Texas Tech straight up for kind of my picks of the week. Um, I'm with you. Notre Dame will be a fun game to watch. It's on NBC at 1.30. Um, I, I, I'm not going to touch it, but I'm with you. I will not be surprised that was a very uh, close game coming down the stretch. And if you want to see points, an over-under of 73, if West Virginia kicks it in gear, I expect them to have a, a comfortable win. Um, they're, on, they're only minus four and a half. Now, I know they're going to Oklahoma State, but Will Greer, when that offense is rolling and when they do not take their foot off the pedal, should beat Oklahoma State. Uh, West Virginia's offense is one of the best in the country. They had a huge win off Texas. They're still playing for a, a Final Four berth. Yeah playing a team in Oklahoma State who just got punched in the gut from their rival, um, I'm sure they'll get up for the game, but I, I really like West Virginia uh, in that situation. So, bet West Virginia, uh, bet Texas Tech, and tease Texas Tech and uh, Utah for kind of my fun picks of the week. And are we you ready know, to get to the – go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted a, a couple more take it to the windows. Boston College sure. will beat Florida State in Tallahassee. They're only a – a couple of point favorite, I think a point and a half or something. Another one is, you know, last year these two battled right around this time, actually. Uh, Miami and Virginia Tech just decided uh, the uh, <clears throat> the ACC side of the conference, the Coastal. Um, somehow, some way, and I know Virginia Tech is falling flat on their face too, but Miami's a six point favorite on the road. I just like, I, I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't know. I mean. Are you really going to give them six and a half? They can barely put up six points, let alone win by six on the road. Uh, so, yeah, that's just, uh, you know, a, a fan uh, looking at it going, huh, really? Okay. Yeah, I think we're ready, though, for the old uh, for the old crafty pick of the week. Oh, and our, uh, our, our Raging Cajuns are a 17 and a half point favorite if they win. I'm playing the fight song for them on our podcast start off next week. They'll be bull eligible. Bull, we'll play the Raisin Cajun fight song. They got to beat the South Alabama Jags that are 17 and a half point favorite at Cajun uh, Field. The Jags. Where, they, where they cook we our food. We know the Jags well. The Jags yep, have we, been all up in our picks. We do. <laughs> we do. And with our picks being said, I, I, I'm going with a, a crappy game. There's one game I could pick, but I'm tired of picking this. We've literally picked almost the same damn teams almost every show this year. <laughs> so I'm going. I'm going. We've picked teams. about between seven teams the whole year, basically. Literally. <laughs> so, and I could do that again, but I'm going with a different option. I won't say the team I'm skipping, but if you look up on the schedule, it's pretty obvious too. But we're going with another doozy. We have. So now Tulsa. you're going to see this, people. He's going to mess with the formula. The worst game he's not picking. He's. Messing with the formula. I want this on record. I want it on record. Proceed. Proceed. All right. Was it UTEP Tulsa. Western Kentucky? Is that, yeah, that what it was? Did. UTEP Western Kentucky? Yeah. God dang it. God dang it. I wanted to go with my minors. Son of a gun. Yep, it's over. It's, it, you fucked up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, my God. Formula. We, we, we it, formulated this thing for it. years. Years of but formulation hey. to come up with this, and now you just want to. Oh, which one do you want? Behind door one, behind door two. Unbelievable. All right, let's see what you got, buddy. But but Jeez. with doing this, you've had a good year. So a, a little a little <laughs> swimming back and forth has still led to success. And I'm tired of. Okay, the point of the crappy pick of the week is not to break down the same team every effing week. <laughs> You know, it, it used to be, I think, almost every year, we normally repeat a team or two. We've got, we're starting to know the depth charts and, and stats of teams. Yeah, that I know on, the two on deep, replay. dude. I got the two deep <laughs> of the minors, dude. I've been looking at them all year long. Oh, God almighty. So we're going with Tulsa. Tulsa is 2-8 and eight on the year. They're 1-5 and five in the American Conference. It's taking on Navy, who 
surprisingly fits the crappy pick of the week. Normally, maybe win seven to eight games yeah. a year. For this year, they're down a little bit, which is where I would expect maybe to bounce back next year. But maybe he's also two and eight, one and five on the year. Clearly, the option has not affected teams as much as usual. Hell, last year, Navy was a, a player two away from being UCF and had a phenomenal year. Um, so I'm taking, I'm giving yeah. you Tulsa at Navy. Navy's minus six. That's the option. But clearly, the options have been struggling. It's at Annapolis, Maryland, at the Navy Marine Corps, I believe, Memorial Center. What is your breakdown of two and eight versus two and eight in an American matchup where it's going to be 50 degrees? I thought it might be a little bit colder, which could help the run game. But 50 degree weather, that ain't bad. What are you feeling, my friend? Well, from the looks of it, I think that's all they can do is run anyway. Um, all right. So, interesting. Okay. What do we got here? Oh, yeah, we got a doozy. I mean, this 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 equates. This equates. I mean, Navy's only gave it up 36 a game. That's pretty decent. They, well, this makes sense, though. But they're averaging 64 yards a game passing. But Navy is running for 296 on the ground. Um, so Sounds right. It's not like you can just, you know, you can't just bully them like that. Um Jeez. You know, they did play Notre Dame tough for a while. You know, being that we just had, you know, a military. Yeah, you know what? With the whole military theme, the whole World War, you know, look back and appreciate and all that great stuff. You know, there's only 245 tickets on Vivid Seats. They go as low as 18. Um, I So we got a six six point. Wow. Okay. Our, is, wait a second. I can't. My thing's kind of frozen. Is that a six point for Navy? Yeah. Na- Navy's minus okay. six at home. Yes, sir. Okay. It's actually coming back now. All right. Cool. Um. Jeez. I'm going to go Navy. I'm going to go Navy. They're just going to run it up and down. They can't. They are horrible at the pass, though. Wow, I didn't realize that as far as defending it. But then again, Tulsa can't throw it, so we're good there. Tulsa ran the ball for 210. That's big. Nope. Almost 300 yards. Wow. Yeah, I'm going to go Navy. I'm going Navy here. I think they've played the better competition. Uh, They're a tad more prideful. And they're just going to run, run, run run the ball. So I'm going Navy to try to get back on track. And by the way, speaking of Lane Kevin, now I know he's got an 18-year deal, you know, at whatever college he coaches <laughs> at, right? Oh, my God. I know he signed up to that fake extension. So, oh, yeah, 12 years. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to be there 12 years. Right. Uh-huh. Sure. Maybe if he had to be in prison near the college or something, he'd be there for 12 years. But other than that, Jesus. he ain't staying there for no extension. I don't care what the extension is. But then again, he was just, you know, recruiting a, a seven-year-old the other day. So who knows? Um, but there is a rumor going around that he may become the offensive coordinator for the Miami Hurricanes. There's a rumor going Ooh. around Ooh. that he Ooh. may become the Miami coordinator. What do you think of that? Oh. And then we'll get that line. Oh. oh, you know, for for a guy that takes so much grief for always saying Finn and Lane Kiffin on a show, it would be hard for you to talk about a team and not mention him. I mean, <laughs> well, yeah, of course if that, not. I'd be like, oh. you doing Bama. You know how you hated Bama, screw Bama, hate Bama. Kiffin's there. I, I yeah. like Bama. Bama's a good program. It's a great program. That's exactly what I'd be with Kiffin. You know, all those things I said about Kiffin, I was just making it up for the show. Just trying to make it entertaining. Oh, oh, <laughs> wow. I knew that he was a great man and a great coach and a stoic person. That's what I'm going to be saying. I'm going to be talking about my ass. Is he a hey, he could put his hands up. We need some hands up calls right about now, dude. Because right now, oh, it's man. hands up. It's hands up. Like what the hell was that? <laughs> oh, hey. Uh, on that 
I know, man. I, I, I started off the show with a little bitching about my Golden State dubs. And I'll, I'll, I'll gladly finish on that happy note of uh, if, if Lane rolls into Miami, I, you know, I, people say what they want about the guy. He, he produces offensive numbers when he's a play caller. Right? And he's done a respectable job at, at Florida Lance. A little bit of a different landscape with yeah. the talent he, he has. But he can if that happens, his ass off, too. Uh, yes, uh, an yeah, uh, um, uh, emergency podcast, uh, a real one, a, a college yeah, football sure. one, not a not a soap opera one. A, if that'd be a if, show. If Lane goes, that's a week. Oh, oh show. God, that's a, that's the Lane oh. Kiffin show, dude. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> oh, I can't I can't wait for that, brother. We'll see. Well, I I won't complain about that at all. And uh, just in case you're Neither wondering, we didn't talk much about we didn't talk much about Bama this week. That is simply because they play Citadel. There's no spread available on ESPN right now. Tua maybe plays uh, a quarter. I, I know. Yeah, I don't even know why. Well, I don't even know why he's playing. We just want to get you know, him up I, there. I was a little confused because Saban's like, "Well, he's going to play." It's like, dude, for for what? He, his knees had buckling issues all year. I, I don't see what the defense is. Hell, let Jalen let Jalen Hurts play the full game. I. I are you really going to risk it? I, I would assume. I'll, I'll pay attention to that. If he does more than two or three drives, I don't really see the point. You could probably beat Citadel with your third stringers. So I, I would – I honestly, I hope, seriously, that he will not get her in a game like this to, to ruin uh, uh, the year they have. But part of that's on Saban's decision. So um, maybe he'll change his mind. But, yeah, dude, too, uh, you got to play maybe a, a few drives and then go, go send the best because it's not worth it. Sorry, I had to do it. It was on Twitter. It was Draymond Green talking about the situation. Um, all right, let's get the hell out of here, sir. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> uh, I, I again, three years ago, I told you trade. Durant for Devin Booker. I've been praying for that forever, and I, I'm fed. He, the guy needs to go. I'm fed up with him. But on another note, thanks for listening to our podcast. Um, we love it. We've uh, got a lot of support this year. Again, try to listen um, and enjoy the time with your family. The holidays are coming up, which means the Cowboys are going to break my heart on Thanksgiving, but my dad's coming down to visit. So all in all, enjoy the podcast. Have a good week with your family and friends. Have good holidays, uh, and hopefully watch an upset this week. Like I said, this week looks too easy, so someone's going to uh, uh, choke and make it a little more of a fun show when we come back. The boys are out. Have a good night. Peace.